Well, joining me now is Marcin Buzanski. He's a senior advisor at the Warsaw Security Forum. Thanks for being with us. Marcin, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is calling for a no-fly zone over his country, presumably by NATO. Uh, Poland is an important member of NATO and shares a long border with Ukraine. Do you think NATO would really be willing to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine and risk a direct military confrontation with Russia? Uh, thank you, Terry, for the invitation. I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I think uh, as of this moment, the no-fly zone uh, is off the table, but I will underline at this moment. Events are developing so quickly that, uh, honestly, it is very, very hard to predict uh, how, they will, uh, how they will unfold. Um, right now, the key element uh, in terms of a possible no-fly zone would be the protection of civilians or protection of something that we're increasingly calling the green corridors, which are a major priority to support and help the, the civilian populations, which are uh, in, dire, in dire straits, in dire conditions at, uh, at the moment. And I think this, this will be one of the first uh, key elements if, um, if some kind of corridors can be protected, uh, uh, how the agreements from the recent uh, discussions between the Russian delegation uh, and the Ukrainian delegation will be implemented. Um, will mm. it work in any way? Because we still have to have to see that. And I think this will be the first considerations around uh, the no-fly zone. I don't think there's any uh, you know, agreement uh, at this moment to uh, engage beyond uh, supply and uh, delivery. Uh, uh, of, uh, of Ukrainian armed uh, forces, uh, okay. but uh, certainly uh, this is a state of affairs just for this moment for today. Now, President Zelensky, Zelensky uh, he's also saying that uh, Ukraine might not be the only country that Vladimir Putin has his eyes on, that he's, uh, Zelensky is suggesting that Vladimir Putin might attack other countries surrounding Ukraine. Uh, he mentioned Poland by name. What do you make of that? Uh, I think we have to be very, very uh, clear about the situation that we're in. Uh, it is absolutely a risk uh, that, uh, that we have to take into consideration. Um, he, he is an unpredictable man. Uh, and uh, we see really that uh, that there is a madman uh, steering at uh, at Russia's uh, um, wheel right now. So we, the Baltic states uh, are in I think greatest risk. Uh, Poland is also um, uh, at risk. Now it might seem uh, implausible at this point, uh, but this is something that has to be taken into consideration if there is a major escalation. Now. What it means also that the efforts in deterrence need to be increased because this is the only thing that uh, uh, Putin will listen to uh, if he if he is sure that he cannot win in any way. And this will only happen if the support that is being provided right now to Ukraine, the military support, is uh, increased. Uh, is, uh, is being delivered much, much faster than it is right now because this is becoming uh, uh, an issue and that uh, there is extremely clear um, uh, messaging signs, including right now strengthening the eastern flank significantly with uh, troop deployments from, from NATO countries to the Baltic states, to Poland, uh, to Romania, to show Putin that we are serious uh, about this beyond, uh, beyond any doubt. The view of the threat from Russia, from Central and Eastern Europe, is often different from the view here in Western Europe. Do you see alignment happening now more uh, as a result of the Ukraine conflict? We do see these changes, and of course, uh, I think that the biggest sign of it was uh, was uh, Chancellor um, Schultz's recent uh, speech and the sh tectonic shift in, in German policy. Uh, but uh, but this is something that that has to really be sustained. This is not time to be saying uh, we told you so. Uh, uh, what's going to happen uh, here? This is a time for a united front. This is a 1939 moment where we have a clear aggressor, uh, where we have an, uh, an imperial uh, revisionist uh, uh, invasion of a democratic country, and where everybody has to throw out any doubt. This is not a fight for Ukraine. This is a fight for European security. This is a fight uh, for the way of life of, of Germans uh, and Poles and, 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 and French and, and, and Brits. So, so we really need to step up here as a united front. Uh, uh, the, the commitment of the military support has to be uh, uh, 
very, very clear, and there can be uh, no doubt for Putin that if he escalates, he will be met with uh, with full might. Now, we have okay. the words coming out that this is going to happen, but we also need the deployment of, uh, of troops. Uh, mm. And first and foremost, we need to support Ukraine in any possible way in terms of arms, uh, in terms of uh, uh, lethal equipment to fight uh, this war, because they're fighting it for us. NATO has boosted its defensive troop presence in Eastern Europe, talking about deterrence. Is it enough to deter any Russian attack on NATO countries? Well, this is, uh, this is certainly a, more of a diplomatic sign than a truly uh, a military operational one. I think it would need to be uh, increased further if we were to uh, truly engage in a, in a confrontation uh, scenario that could, uh, that could roll out in, uh, into many ways. Uh, but, uh, but I think uh, we still have to see uh, the scale of the military operation which will unfold, uh, particularly in the west of Ukraine, to, uh, to judge that and whether the forces in Belarus are, are engaged to, um, uh, to cut off uh, the border. This is, uh, this is one of our first and foremost important concerns right now, because this is where the supply channels are coming into Ukraine, uh, and they need to be uh, really uh, enforced right now at the moment. Marcin, good talking to you. That was Marcin Bozanski from the Warsaw Policy, from the Warsaw Security Forum. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Thank you very much, Derek.